football's the the international language, and whether you whether you like it or are good at it or not, um, it just can really communicate with cultures and communities all over the world. So. When I was 21, I went to North Africa with a Christian organization and we went to the beach in Morocco. We wanted to meet people mm -hmm. and they're all playing football. So I'm not a great footballer, but I joined in and um, within a few minutes, you're getting to know people. You see their personality a little bit. Um, somebody once said, if you really want to know what somebody's like from church, you don't want to see them on a Sunday morning when they're looking nice. You see them <laughs> on a Wednesday night and a cold Wednesday somewhere in Stockport when they get fouled from behind with only a minute to go at the <laughs> yes. end of the match. And so from that point of view, it can really be a, a great way to connect with people. And that's the basis of what Ambassadors Football does, really. We help churches connect with their environment through the international language of football. Fantastic. Well, we've been talking a little bit here today on this webinar about Festival Manchester, yeah. going to be the biggest free Christian festival that we've ever seen. And we want people to come along and be excited. But how can people watching this webinar thinking to themselves, yeah, we'd like to run a project around sport for our community. How do they go about that? What yeah, ideas um, have you got? I mean, we run a community football outreach training. Um, the next one, actually, I think it's March the 26th. Having just arrived in the car, I'd have to look at my watch, <laughs> my, my, my phone to, to check on the date. But that's a one hour presentation about how to, from a church point of view, how can you impact your community and reach out practically. Right. Um, but the easiest way to engage with people and, and, and meet them in a community, especially um, in a park, would be go with a bag of footballs, you could go with a Bible, a few cones. Um, you set up a football um, environment. You know, you've got a couple of goals, jumpers for goalposts. But if you're organising something, you decide what the format is. And so we can give tools from ambassadors. Mm. We're available. Um, we're working with three churches right now, actually. One in Flixton, one in Gorton, and uh, one down Oldham Road, just uh, near where I used to get the bus from Piccadilly Gardens um, when I was growing up in Manchester. We're working with them to say... Here's how you can go into a public place. It could be a park or you can invite people to an, uh, an event that you're doing. And um, with a football, you can create the environment where you can, you can share um, life with people. So mm. you play, play sport with them. But at the same time, you can introduce good values and biblical principles quite easily into a football environment. That's what we've learned over 30 years, really. Mm, started right. in Bolton. Teamwork and, teamwork yeah, and things teamwork, like that. Teamwork being a um, Pep Team Guardiola, <laughs> although I hate to say it, I think I know that you're a blue, aren't you? I anyway, am. Anyway, <laughs> only, only by the grace of God can I sit here next to a Manchester City fan. But that's, um, they, it's, praise the Lord for good times for, for City. Um, I grew up in the 70s and 80s when United were not doing well and I still supported them. But um, Pep Guardiola says about the footballers that come yeah. to Manchester City, you've already got the skill. What you need are, um, is humility wanting the team to do better than the individual and really hard work. So those three things, I've, wow. I've shared those with blokes and kids all I over the world. That. And um, for somebody like that to say that, the, the way in which the principles of football these days really um, fit well with, with what we want to try to do with, with sharing our faith and yeah. uh, the Bible. So really, that's instilling really good values into young people, whatever teams we support. You yes. know, we, we believe in these things and it's yeah. showing respect. And I know people, I work a lot with the police and they really appreciate the fact that we're, we're bringing those values. Yeah. It's one of the things we can do as Christians, yeah. isn't it? And it's interesting to see that um, young people and those that might not be um, that positive about um, behaviour or discipline or authority, although they might not like the referee, if you've got a whistle in your hand and you're their coach, they'll actually listen to you probably more than they might do to a teacher or yeah. to someone else in authority that they meet every day. So they're the type of tools and the simple things that we try to share. It's not complicated and you don't need to, just to encourage you, you don't need to like football to be involved in football ministry. You just have to realise, wow, it's a, it's a tool that we can, a vehicle to, to share in our community. Yeah. And we can apply those principles to, to doing other kind of sporting activities within the community yeah. other than football. But from what you were saying earlier, where you're bringing your jumpers for the goalposts and things like that, it doesn't necessarily have to cost a lot of money no. to do this project. But also I want to ask you things like, do you need the DBS checks? Do you need risk assessments? Because those are sometimes the things that put us off doing these projects. It's true, yeah. Um, we always, through our programmes, will 
we'll make sure things are, are done well. And that's yeah. one of the things we do through our webinar that's a one hour presentation that goes into the details of that. We've got examples of, of the risk assessments you might need, other issues that you might have to deal with to do a football in the community project. And so if a church is involved, often, I hope, you're, you've got those things in place for yeah. some of the other activities that you do. And so if you're doing that, then they can apply to the football activity. And then it's not complicated, too, it's not too hard to, to do a simple risk assessment that we would have for all of our projects. The one in Gorton, um, in fact, that's how I got really connected with you guys. They, Trinity Baptist Church they said, oh, we're involved in Festival Manchester around the Jubilee. We're going to go over to the park and we're going to do a little footy festival um, in the park. And so wow. we're involved with them, trying to help them do that. But then that could be a, a good lead in to just get kids to get to know you. And then you say, oh, yeah, right. we're heading over to Withenshaw Park in the end of July or whenever it is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So um, just to finish with, I'd just love you to tell us a story of a life that has been changed sure. through your football outreach. I'm sure you've got thousands of stories, but, you know, we want to see lives changed at the end of the day mm. through these me uh, mechanisms of yeah. sport. So yeah. just share us something. Yeah, again, I mean, um, in London, where we do a lot of work, um, we also do camps that are short term, three to five day activity um, holiday clubs, basically based around football, where we share the gospel a bit more directly than we would in a weekly program. And a few years ago in um, in East London, there was a lad that came along who hadn't really ever come to church, but at the end of the week, um, we said there's a there's a prize giving and there's a celebration for this week, and it's at the local church. So he said to his mum and dad that were not together, not living together, he said, oh, can you come along? Because I had a really good week and really enjoyed it. So they came along and um, they saw that situation and the mum um, taught Zumba. So she said to the church leaders, oh, I need a location to teach Zumba. Can I, can I help do something? Um, can I do, use your facility? And so that led to her doing that. And then through hearing the gospel and, and going to church then as a couple, they realized that they really should be back together if they could be. And they got back together again, and the young man um, ended up keeping going to church. And as a family, the football activity, the camp, was the catalyst to just bring them all back together. I mean, it's, yeah, it's, it's great to know that can happen. When I said share a story, I wasn't <laughs> quite expecting a story that powerful. <laughs> so it's so, such a great story. Thanks so much. So do get in contact with us if you want to know more about how you can use sport. And we'll find out that information um, on, that Martin shared. So thanks so much, Martin. Yeah.